Hi, hello, this is Anita Raj, your chemistry mentor, welcoming you for the new session in chemical kinetics. In this session, I shall teach you all the formulas and units coming under chemical kinetics. This is the basic thing in chemical kinetics, understood? So, what do you mean by rate of a reaction? It may be defined as the change in concentration of any of the reactants or products per unit time, okay? So, always there will be change in concentration of the reactants as well as the products as time goes on, okay? Now, let us see how to find out the unit for this rate of reaction. So, for that, first you should know the unit for the concentration of the reactants. How to write the concent unit for the concentration of the reactant? What is that? It is the number of moles of the solute per liter of a solution okay number of moles of the solute per liter that means for concentration it is moles per liter okay it is a moles per liter understood so what is the unit for this time it is yes second okay second okay since it is since the time is in the denominator when it comes to the numerator it will become right we will be writing like this so moles per liter so liter can be written as minus 1 and this since the time is in denominator when it comes in the numerator we write like this yes minus 1 understood so this is the unit for rate of a reaction for a normal reaction if suppose if the uh, reaction is taking place with in the presence of a gaseous reactant or the molecule then this will be changing understood how we will be writing for the concentrations here we are writing as moles per liter is it not but if the if, if it is if the gaseous reaction and the products are there then we will be writing as ATM will be taking into account the atmospheric pressure okay ATM okay ATM yes minus 1 okay so we will be taking into consideration this atmospheric pressure so this is the unit when the reactants and the products are in the gaseous state and it this could be the unit if the if the reactants and the products are not in the gaseous phase in other phases if they are understood now let us see the graphical representation for this rate of a reaction see normally the rate of a reaction is represented as dx by dt means the change in concentration with the change in uh, time okay now here see this graphical representation now we are uh, we have drawn a graph uh, between concentration and time when you are drawing a graph for this for the reactant see the concentration of the reactant is going on decreasing as time passes okay but the concentration of the product is going on increasing as time passes so the, both are just vice versa right so when you are writing the rate of the reaction in terms of the reactants there uh, the formula will goes like this it is minus dr by dt why we are using the minus term because the concentration of the reactant is going on decreasing that's why we are giving repre representing with a minus symbol right now in terms of products if you want to write the rate of reaction in p is equal to plus dp by dt why plus because the concentration of the product is going on increasing as time goes on increasing understood next we shall see the two different types of rate of reactions that is average rate of reaction and instantaneous rate of reaction what is average rate of reaction see actually the rate of a reaction if it is measured over a long period of time if it is measured over a long uh, period of time then it is called as average rate of reaction see here the uh, we are uh, taking into consideration two concentrations x1 and x2 that is con concentration of the reactant is measured at two different time intervals okay x1 represents the concentration of the reactant at t1 and x2 represents the concentration of the reactant at t2 so two different uh, time intervals we have measured and now see this average rate of reaction is the ratio between the difference between the two concentration terms at two different time intervals and the time okay so this will give the average rate of reaction this formula will give delta x by delta t delta x is nothing but x2 minus xt and delta t is t2 minus t T1, T1. So, this formula will give the average rate of reaction. Then what is instantaneous rate of reaction? See, it is the rate of change of concentration of the reactants or the product at a particular instant of time. See, here we will be uh, taking into consideration the concentration of the reactant at a particular time alone. But here we have taken uh, two, uh, two different uh, time intervals. We have taken the concentration and we have taken the difference. But here we will be considering only at one particular time we will be taking the concentration.
concentration okay so this will give this difference this ratio will give that is the concentration by time will give the instantaneous rate of reaction see when you are comparing these two types of uh, rate of reaction this instantaneous rate of reaction is preferred to average rate of reaction because this average rate of reaction remains constant throughout the entire span which is not true actually because experimentally when you are taking into consideration the rate of the reaction will be going on decreasing uh, with the passage of time normally the rate of the reaction will be decreasing with the passage of time okay because the reactants uh, concentration will be decreasing automatically the rate of the reaction will be decreasing but uh, uh, but in the average rate of reaction the rate of reaction will be remaining uh, a constant throughout the span so the next important one is the rate law or the rate equation according to the law of mass action the rate of a reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactant understood rate of a reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactant so, so i have written a general reaction here a a plus b b a small a represents the number of moles of a and b small b represents number of moles of b okay this gives the product so now rate of the reaction r is directly proportional to the uh, what is it is directly proportional to the concentration of uh, a and here we will be writing the power that is number of moles into concentration of B understood. So when you are uh, replacing this proportional to sign we will be in including a, a constant that is equal to R is equal to K into concentration of A into concentration of B understood. So this is the formula for the rate law or the rate equation understood. Now next we shall see the order of a reaction. What do you mean by order of a reaction? Actually, it is the sum of the powers of the concentration term that come in the rate expression. See, this is the rate expression. R is equal to K into A power X into B power Y. See, here this is rate expression. R is equal to K into A power A, B power B. Okay. So, now what is order of a reaction? It is the sum of the power powers on the concentration terms. This is the concentration term. A and B are the concentration terms of the reactants. Right. So, now this is the power. Okay. So, we should sum up these two if you are summing up these two we will get the order of the particular reaction so how can you write the order of the reaction it is x plus y understood student this is how you should find out the order of a reaction see normally this order of a reaction can be zero or it can be a whole number and even it can be a fraction understood so it can be zero whole number or even a fraction understood the topic is molecularity of a reaction See what is molecularity? It's the total number of atoms or ions or molecules of the reactants that are involved in the reaction is termed as molecularity. Okay. See it's the total number of atoms, either atoms or ions or molecules. See I have given an example. See, uh, uh, I mean, what is this preparation of nitrogen dioxide from nitric oxide? Okay. See two molecules of nitric oxide with one molecule of oxygen. Uh, it gives nitrogen dioxide. Okay. Then how to find out the molecularity? What is given in the definition? It's the total number of the molecules of the reactants is it not so how many how many molecules are here 2 plus 1 so 2 molecules of nitric oxide and 1 molecule of oxygen is not 2 plus 1 so it is 3 so molecularity is 3 okay so how to find out uh, then order order of the reaction how to find out the order action reaction what is order of the reaction how will you write it is the rate expression r is equal to k into how will you write n o we have seen in the previous one is it not 2 into oxygen is it not it is one right so uh, it's the number of mo number of two this two represents the number of molecules of nitric oxide and one represents number of molecules of oxygen so how to find out the order it is two plus one that is three understood so order of the reaction is also three understood this is how you should find out the molecularity and order of a particular reaction okay next is the rate constant or the specific reaction rate what do you mean by rate constant or specific reaction rate see when the concentration of the reactant is taken as unity then the rate of the reaction is known as rate constant understood if when the concentration of the reactant is taken as unity we will consider the rate of the reaction is rate constant okay okay so i have given example a gives product now what is the uh, rate re rate equation for this one r is equal to rate of the reaction r is equal to minus da by dt y minus because uh, uh, normally the reactants concentration will be going on decreasing as the reaction progresses is it not so that's why we have written minus minus da by dt so how how this can be written as k into a what is k it is a rate constant okay so suppose if we are considering the concentration of this a reactant as unity this this equation will become r will be equal to k 
k because a is concentration is 1 is it not so r will be equal to k so this uh, rate equation will become r is equal to k understood students see this unit of this k will be depending upon the order of the reaction okay normally it will be depending upon the order of the re reaction what is the general unit for k actually what is the general unit for k this is rate constant right general unit for k is mole 1 minus n l n minus 1 yes minus 1 see you should uh, uh, be thorough with this formula okay this is the uh, general formula for rate constant where this n represents the order okay it re n represents the order that is the sum of the powers okay that's the sum of the powers see already we have seen some of the powers of the concentration terms so n represents the order uh, and for for it see this is for the normal reaction okay this is the general formula for k general unit for k uh, for a normal reaction uh, normal reactants okay if it if the reactants are in the gaseous state so what could be the general form form a uh, unit for this k general unit is atm atm 1 minus n s minus 1 understood students see these two things you should be thorough these two uh, you, uh, general uh, units you should be thorough only then it is possible to write the uh, one word questions related to the unit for a rate constants for various orders of reactions understood Check the rate equation and half life for the zeroth order reaction see this for the rate equation as we all know that r is equal to k okay for the zeroth order and for the for half life it is t half is equal to a concentration of a to the power 0 by 2k so this is the formula for the half life for the zeroth order reaction okay next is for the first order reaction rate equation for the first order reaction is k is equal to 2.303 by t log of concentration of a in the initial stage that's why we are writing zero here by uh, a concentration of a at time t okay at time t what is the concentration okay this is the rate equation for the first order reaction okay uh, then next half life for half life it's t half is equal to ln 2 by k so how will you convert this ln into log ln into log can be ln can be converted converted to log by introducing 2.303 log 2 by k see when you are multiplying this uh, 2.303 with log 2 you'll be getting 0. You will be getting 0 0.693 by K. So, this is if the information is given in terms of angle of rotation of optically active compounds, then we can make use of this formula to determine the rate constant of for the first order reaction. So, K is equal to 2.303 by T log R infinity minus R0 by R infinity minus RT, where R0 represents the initial angle of rotation, okay, initial angle of rotation and RT represents the angle of rotation at time T and R infinity represents the angle of rotation after long time understood so th this is the formula which we have to use to find out the rate constant for the uh, first order reaction if the values are given like this that is r infinity or volumes of reagents are given in volumetric analysis then we use the following equation to determine the rate constant understood so for the first order reaction if the volume of the reagents are given then we should make use of this where formula k is equal to 2.303 by t log v infinity minus v0 by v v infinity minus vt okay where v0 represents the volume initial volume and vt represents the volume at a particular time and v infinity represents the volume of the reagent after a long time understood after a long time of titration understood if suppose if suppose if v0 value is not given if the initial value is not given how to uh, convert this formula how to use what formula we can use k is equal to 2.303 by t log if suppose v0 value is not given you can directly make use of this formula v infinity minus vt understood if suppose v infinity value is not given you can make use of this formula that is k is equal to 2.303 by t log volume of that is initial volume divided by vt volume at a particular 
time understood student this is the formula we should make use of to find out the rate constant uh, to find out the rate constant of a first order reaction if the volume of the reagents are given understood so uh, next one is the activation that next formula relates the activation energy okay with that of the rate constant and this formula is given by arrhenius so that see this equation is called as arrhenius equation which is very important so the formula goes like this k is equal to a e power minus ea by rt where k represents the rate constant that you know is it not and a represents the arrhenius factor a r r h e n i u s arrhenius factor or frequency factor okay arrhenius factor or frequency factor what do you mean by arrhenius factor or frequency factor it gives the number of binary collisions okay this a gives the number of binary collisions of a reacting molecule per second understood and next comes e a what is e a e a is nothing but it is the activation energy okay it is the activation energy activation energy right see this activation energy it is the minimum energy which the reacting species must possess in order to undergo a specific reaction okay so it's the minimum energy a reacting species should possess to undergo a specific reaction understood so what do you mean what is this one does a whole e power minus ea by rt it is the it gives the fraction of molecules having energy ea this total quantity will give the fraction of molecules having energy ea understood so what is r then this is the gas constant actually gas constant r is gas constant it can make use of 8 point that is 8.3 sorry 8.314 joules per kelvin okay so this is the value with the for in in terms of joules right and see here next we are going to see the slope slope is equal to minus ea by 2.303 r how to find out this slope so when you are uh, uh, drawing a graph between log k versus 1 by t will get a, a straight line and this from this straight line this is the intercept and this intercept will give a what is a log a what is a it is a frequency factor and this slope will give this value e by 2.303 r okay ea by 2.303 r so this using this formula it is possible using this value it is possible to find out the activation energy understood slope is equal to minus a by 2.303 r understood activation energy this uh, this formula gives how to find out the activation energy if two rate constant at two different temperatures are given okay so log k2 by k1 is equal to ea by 2.303 r into t2 minus t1 by t1 t2 okay so where k2 represents the rate constant at, point, at temperature t2 and k1 represents the rate constant at temperature t1 understood so this formula is very important using this formula you will be getting more and more number of problems right and next one is the relationship between half life period and percentage of reactions completed see using these formulas it is possible to calculate the half life period of a particular reaction within within seconds okay so just it goes like this if 50 percentage of the reaction is completed you can make use of the formula t half for the first order reaction what is t half actually t half is t half is equal to ln 2 by k that is already we have calculated in the previous slide is it not it is 0 0.693 right 0 0.693 by k so using this formula it is possible to calculate uh, for the half i mean half life period right t half right t 50 percentage if 50 percentage completed you can make use of this formula t half directly if 75 percentage then it, you should make use of 2 into t half if 87.5 percentage is completed 3 into t half 93.75 percentage then 4 into t half understood so all this just you can mug it up now t 90 90 percentage is completed then 10 by 3 t half or 3.33 t half t 99 percentage means 20 by 3 t half that is equal to 6.66 t half if 99.9 percentage of the reaction is completed you can make use of this formula that is 10 into t half so these are the uh, different formulas you can make use of to calculate the half-life period for different percentage of reactions completed for a first order reaction understood students fine students you might have understood all the formulas and units of chemical kinetics clearly let me meet with you another important topic in a short period until then, it's Anita Raj signing off from you. Thanks for watching.